Now, there are several really interesting facts about sugar that you probably never heard about before. And so I want to dive right in and explain these to you. Now, the make or break uh, amount of carbohydrate to get into ketosis is roughly around 50 grams per carb per day. Now, that's a rough estimate. It could be a little bit more, could be a little bit less, depending on your metabolism. But what does this mean, 50 grams of carbohydrate? Is it 50 grams of sugar? Is it 50 grams of net carbs, which is basically the total carbs minus fiber? Or is it just 50 grams of total carbohydrates? It's a bit confusing for people. So from my viewpoint, it should be 50 grams of net carbs. So you'd minus the um, fiber. But there's a huge difference between consuming 50 grams of sugar, okay, carb, or just 50 grams of just net carbs in general. But of course, you might have this question, like if it's not sugar uh, and it's not fiber, what type of carb is it? And the answer for that is a starch. And a starch is just a series of sugar molecules connected together. But if we look at 50 grams of carbohydrates from sugar, um, that would be equivalent to a 12-ounce soda, specifically the orange soda, that has like roughly about 49 to 50 grams of pure sugar, right? That's the carbohydrate that's in that. Now, if we compare that to 50 grams of net carbs from vegetables, like salad carbohydrates, it's a little bit more than 12 ounces. It's actually 42 cups of salad, which is 3,125 grams. So when you're going on keto, when someone says 50 grams of carbs, and you're going to get this from orange soda, it's going to go in there very, very fast and spike your blood sugars. And it's going to definitely create a dent into your ability to get results versus if you have this other thing which has so much fiber, it goes into your body very slowly, breaks down, you're going to get into ketosis much better. So it's not just 50 grams of net carb. It is the quality of carb. And this is why I don't even recommend counting vegetables as your carb, especially salads. The next thing I want to talk about is when you consume sugar, okay, it's going to elevate your blood sugars. But when you check your blood sugars, what type of sugar are they measuring? Because most sugars really come at kind of a ratio of a 50-50 split from glucose and fructose. So that would be table sugar, beet sugar, honey, that would be coconut sugar, the sugar in fruit, but it's roughly like a 50-50 split between glucose and fructose. Now, when you get your blood sugars checked, they're going to look just at the glucose, right? Because fructose doesn't really increase the blood sugars by that much, maybe a small percentage. It's mainly the glucose. So when you consume like 100 grams of table sugar, only half of that is going to end up as raising your blood sugars. The other half goes right to your liver. And we're talking about fructose. And on the glycemic index, which is an index of how fast uh, glucose kind of raises your blood sugars, um, fructose is very, very low, okay? And glucose is 100, it's very, very high. And then when you combine these two as table sugar or even honey or other uh, sugars, uh, even high fructose corn syrup, that fructose is gonna bring it down on the glycemic index simply because it's not gonna end up in your blood sugars. You might think, wow, fructose is not gonna end up in my blood sugars, that's a good thing. I should consume more fructose. But here's what you might not realize. The only organ that can really deal with this fructose is the liver. And the liver considers fructose almost identical as alcohol in several aspects. Number one, in turning the liver into fat, in producing triglycerides and bad cholesterol. And I'm talking about the small, dense LDL particle size. And the consequences of fructose as far as free radical damage and inflammation to the liver. And when that occurs, you start developing insulin resistance. And that can even turn into diabetes way more than glucose. Okay, so that's interesting. So even though fructose doesn't raise your blood sugars, it creates other issues. Now, there's also an additional sugar called the gava nectar, which is not a 50 50 split of fructose and glucose. It's like an 80-20 split, 80% 80 of it being fructose and 20% being glucose. So agave nectar has the most fructose 
of anything out there more than high fructose corn syrup. And so what does that mean? It means that it creates more liver problems than other types of sugar, even though they'll claim that it's good on your blood sugars. Well, now you know why. Now, if you look at the Sugar Association website, okay, um, they talk about the benefits of sugar. They talk about sugar's not that bad. They talk about the sugar molecule in fruits and natural foods being identical to sweets and refined sugar, et cetera. So most of the sugar that's uh, used in the U.S. is from beets. I think it's like 90%. Of course, uh, it's genetically modified, unfortunately, so there's traces of glyphosate. But the way that they turn beets to sugar uh, is not as simple as they might say on the website, like a three-step simple process where they're just like, oh yeah, we're just processing the sugar in a few simple steps, right? It goes through some major steps. The production of beet sugar starts with washing and slicing uh, the sugar beets into little pieces. And then it passes through a diffusion tower. It, it's separated by extraction with an addition of hot water into the juice and the beet pulp. The pulp, which is rich in nutrients, is dewatered and filtered. So they basically take all the nutrients out. And then uh, that beet pulp is commonly fed to uh, cattle. And then it goes through a liming process where they're adding lime. And it goes through a demineralization process to remove minerals, proteins, pectins, uh, salts, and the coloring agents. And then it goes through several other steps to form these crystals. So as you can see, it's a huge refining process. And the end product of that sugar, glucose, is not the same as the sugar that you would get from vegetables and fruits because it's refined. It's been processed. You're taking all these things out of this natural product and you're refining it. And you have to realize that it's all these other things like the nutrients and the phytonutrients that are going to protect you from that sugar and that fructose sugar on your liver and your cells. The antioxidants protect you against all this free radical damage in your cells. So it might sound like it's the same thing, but it's not. It's not the same thing because you're consuming this isolated molecule from a complex food and in large amounts. Uh, our bodies uh, were not designed to consume the quantities of sweets. Uh, long ago, maybe we got some honey, occasionally if we were lucky, and then also we were able to get some fruit off the tree, but not near of the sweetness that fruits are grown now. And in the past, it would always be seasonal. It wouldn't be all year round. So it's very, very unnatural for our bodies to consume fruit and honey and sweeteners every day of the year. But it was a survival mechanism because sugar converts into fats fairly quickly if you eat a large amount of it. And that fat is a survival mechanism due to the extra fat that we would gain on our midsections. Now, people don't look at people that are overweight as them surviving better. But in the past, the people that had extra weight survived longer than the skinny people. So that was a really positive survival thing that doesn't really correlate to nowadays. This is why our bodies love sweet foods, because there's pleasure involved, because of the survival aspect. The problem is now it's not a survival thing, it's an anti-survival thing. And so a little bit of honey and a little bit of fruit might be okay, but not at the amounts that we're doing nowadays. The other interesting thing about glucose is that the chemistry is very similar to vitamin C. You might have not known that before either, which means that they're competitive to a certain degree. If you're consuming sugar, um, your body will not absorb the vitamin C at the same time. So if given the choice, the body will take the sugar over the vitamin C. And one really good way to know if you're deficient in vitamin C is that if you have like spongy gums or gums around your teeth are bleeding when you brush your teeth, that's like a, a mild version of scurvy because we need vitamin C for the capillary strength because the, the collagen in the capillaries and you have these gums that are just rich in these capillary beds. Now, if you want some really good ideas for alternatives to sugar, you should probably watch this video right here.